Hi friends, this is Mohsin Khan with a new video lecture on wireless LAN. In this lecture, we will discuss about uh, the most important wireless communication aspect which is known as wireless LAN, the IEEE architecture for wireless LAN. You will find this lecture more helpful for your studies. Before starting the lecture, it is requested that if you have not yet subscribed the channel, please subscribe it and press the bell icon so that every video comes you first. IEEE brings a project or project name at 02 in 1990s, in which wireless LAN has been standardized in 802.11. In this slide, we will discuss about the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is known as wireless fidelity, which is a trademark of the Wi-Fi alliance that manufacturers may use to brand certified products. Belong to a class of wireless local area network devices based on the IEEE 802.11 standards. Because of the close relationship with its underlying standard, the term Wi-Fi is often used as a synonym for IEEE 802.11 technologies. This slide shows the frequency band for wireless local area networks, as we discussed in the earlier lectures that wireless LAN is operated in ISM bands. The ISM band is free of license and is available free of cost everywhere in the world. The ISM band is divided in three different bands which is from 902 to 928 MHz, 2.4 to 2.4835 GHz, the wireless LAN 802.11 B standard and Bluetooth are operated in this band and the 5 GHz band the IEEE 802.11 A and Hyper LAN 1 and Hyper LAN 2 are operated in these bands. This slide shows the ISM band in more detail with the corresponding technologies used as a wireless LAN or wireless PAN. Now we are moving to the stations used in, in wireless LAN. The stations are simply known as STA. Station comprises all devices and equipments that are connected to the wireless LAN. A station can be of two types. A wireless access point are simply known as AP. Are generally wireless routers that form the best stations are access. The clients are workstations, computers, laptop, printers, smartphones etc each station has a wireless interface controller without this controller no device can communicate through wireless LAN with each other the wireless LAN architecture is divided into two sets the first is the basic service set and the other is the extended service set a basic service set is a group of stations communicating at physical layer a basic service station can be of two categories depending upon the mode of operations the infrastructure PSS as figure shown in the right side the devices communicate with other devices devices through the access point. The second is independent basis. Here is the figure show that the devices communicate in peer-to-peer -peer basis uh, in an ad hoc fashion. In this fashion, each device is working as a unique router, performing all the tasks of an access point. The extended service set is made of two or more BCSs with access points. In this scenario, the BCSs are connected through a distribution system, which is usually a wide LAN. The distribution system connects the AP in the BSS. IEEE 802.11 does not restrict the distribution system. It can be any IEEE LAN such as an Ethernet. Note that the extended service set uses two types of stations, the mobile stations and stationary stations. The mobile stations are normally stations inside a BSS. The stationary stations are access point stations that are part of a wider LAN. The figure shows the complete diagram. The comparison of BSS and ESS are shown in this table. BSS has only one access point to connect wireless nodes. Therefore, BCS not support the mobility. While the ESS has two or more access points and support mobility between access points by using mobile IP. The BCS is called an infra infrastructure network. The coverage area of BSS is limited while the coverage area of ESS is are wider than that of BSS coverage area. We can also know the BSS as the building block of a wireless LAN. While in ESS, the number of users are more as compared to BSS. The BSS is more secure than the ESS. This slide shows that some problems arises with wireless LAN. The first one is the placement of access point. Placement of access point completely depend on the availability of the wired network since the obstruction make it difficult to provide total coverage of an area. Therefore, some site surveys are performed to determine the coverage area of an access point. But still the security concerns may cause is, as the signal are available pre in its coverage area. This slide discusses another problem of infrastructure 
and a hawk mode of wireless LAN. In infrastructure based network, a node may move out of the range of the access point, while in the ad hoc mode, a node are not in the direct range of each other. In both these scenarios, the communication will not be possible. For infrastructure based wireless LAN, a node which is out of the range of the access point may be in the range of the other nodes. The diagram shows this scenario. As shown in the figure, in this scenario, the nodes in the range of the access point could relay packet to allow out of range nodes to communicate. But this is not the part of 802.11. While per ad hoc mode, if communication is required between two nodes which are out of range of each other, intermediate nodes can forward the packet. Still, this is not the part of 802.11. There are many variations of 802.11. The first one is the 802.11a protocol. This protocol supports a very high transmission speed of 554 megabits per second. It has a high frequency of 5 gigahertz range due to which signals have difficulty in penetration, walls and other obstructions. It implies OFDM in the physical layer. The 802.11b protocol is operated within the frequency range of 2.4 gigahertz and support 11 megabits per second speed. It facilitates path sharing and is less vulnerable to obstructions. It uses CSMA CA with Ethernet protocol. The 802.11g protocol, this protocol combines the feature of 802.11a and 11b. It supports both the frequency ranges 5 GHz as in 802.11a standard and 2.4 GHz as in 802.11b standard. Running to its dual feature, 802.11g is backward compatible with 802.11b devices and 11g devices, which provides high speeds varying signal range and resilience to obstructions. However, it is more expensive for implementation. The 802.11n protocol sometimes calls the wireless N is an upgraded version of 802.11g. It provides very high bandwidth up to 600 megabits per second and provide a high signal coverage. It uses MIMO having multiple antennas at both the transmitter and receiver ends. In case of signal obstruction, alternative routes are used. However, the implementation is highly expensive. This slides bring the medium access mechanism for wireless LAN. If we use the simple MAC protocol for the wireless LAN, it will cause the hidden and exposed node problems. Therefore, the MACA protocol is used in wireless LAN. The MACA protocol uses the CSMA CA contention based multiple access technique. This slide shows the MAC layer architecture of wireless LAN. The MAC layer architecture of wireless LAN is consists of two functions the distribution coordination function and the point coordination function. Remember that the distribution coordination function is totally dependent on the CSMA CA architecture. The distribution coordination function is defined by IEEE at the MAC sublayer of wireless LAN. DCF uses the CSMA CA as the access method. But to discuss DCF, first we discuss the, the, the main problems of wireless LAN known as a hidden node problem and exposed node problem. The hidden node problem is arises if we use the simple MAC protocol used in wired network for wireless LAN. In the hidden node problem, as diagram shows, there are three nodes A, B and C. Node A can hear B but not C and station C can hear station B but not station A. First assume A is sending to B. When C is ready to transmit, it does not detect carrier and thus commence transmission. This produces a collision at B. In the exposed node problem, there are four stations involved. Here in this scenario, station B wants to communicate with station A, while station C wants to communicate with station D. C senses carrier is busy and has to wait. In this scenario, A is outside the radio range of C, therefore waiting is not necessary. In this scenario, C is exposed to B and this problem is called the exposed node problem. The medium axis with collision avoidance are simply the MACA protocol uses signaling packets for collision avoidance. The concept of RTS and CTS has been introduced in MACA. RTS is request to send while CTS is clear to send. Sender requests the right to send from a receiver with a short RTS packet before it send a data packet. Now the receiver grants the right to send as soon as it is ready to receive. The RTS and CTS packets are contains of three main things the sender address, the receiver address and the duration of communication. The duration define the amount of time required for communication. This slide shows the solution of hidden and exposed node problem with MACA protocol. 
with maca protocol as send an rts packet pass we respond with a cts with the communication duration c receive the cts and abort such communication to b through this technique the proposed collision at b has been avoided now in the case of exposed node problem b wants to send to a c to another terminal in this scenario b send an rts to a which has been received by the c but c does not receive the cts from a therefore c waits for a minimum threshold and then imagine that a is far apart of its radio range therefore c start communicating with d c does not have to wait as it cannot receive CTS from A. Now we are backing to the MAC layer of wireless LAN. As we discussed earlier that MAC layer of the wireless LAN is consists of DCF and PCF. The DCF defines the basic access mechanism, the exponential backup and the new network allocation vectors. Also some timing intervals like SIPs, slots times, PIPs, TIPs and Fs. The DCF operation and PCF operation. There are four basic time intervals uh, defined in the MAC layer of wireless LAN. The SIFS. SIFS is the, is the shortest time interval equals to 10 microsecond followed by the slot time which is slightly longer equal to 20 microseconds. The FIFS is the priority interframe space which is equal to SIFS plus one slot, one time slot. DIFS is the distribution interframe space which is equal to the SIFS plus two time slots. And the last one is the extended interframe space shortly known as EPS is much larger than any of the other intervals. It is used by a station to set its network allocation vector when it receives a prime containing errors, allowing the possibility for the ongoing make prime exchange to complete before another transmission attempts. These values may change from standard to standard. This slide shows the complete working of the DCF. This is clearly shown in the figure that before sending a prime, the source station sends is the medium by checking the energy level at the carrier frequency. The channel uses a persistent strategy with backup until the channel is idle. After the station is spawned to be idle, the station waits for a period of time called TIFS. Then the station sends a control prime called the request to send. Now the receiver after receiving the RTS and waiting a period of time called the SIPS, the destination station sends a control prime called the clear to send to the source station. This control prime indicates that the destination station is ready to receive data. The source station sends data after waiting an amount of time equal to SIPS. The destination station after waiting an amount of time equal to SIPS sends an acknowledgement to show that the prime has been received. Acknowledgement is needed because the station does not have any means to check for the successful arrival of its data at the destination. What is the network allocation vector? The new define how the other station differ sending their data if one station acquires access. With now, when a station sends an RTS frame, it includes the duration of time that it needs to occupy the channel. The stations that are affected by this transmission create a timer called a network allocation vector that shows how much time must pass before these stations are allowed to check the channel for idleness. Each time a station access the system and sends an RTS frame. Other stations start their now. This slide shows the final version of DCF with the complete RTS, CTS, intervals and the network allocation vectors and how the communication is taking place between two communicating parties in detail. This diagram shows the complete flowchart of the main control logic. First of all, a station wait for a prime to transmit. Then it will check the medium if it is busy or not. If the channel is idle, it waits for 6 seconds. If the channel is still idle, it will start the transmitting its prime. If the channel is not idle, it will wait until the transmission ends. Again, it waits for 6 seconds. If the station is idle, it will set its exponential backup while medium is idle and then start transmitting its prime. The point coordination function is an optional access method that can be implemented in an infrastructure network. It is implemented on top of the DCF and is used mostly for time sensitive information. DCF has a centralized contention free polling access method. The access point performs polling for stations that are capable of being polled. The station 
are pulled one after another sending any data they have to the ap to give priority to pcf or dcf another setup enter prem spaces has been defined pips and sips the sips is the same as that in dcf but the pips is shorter than the dips this means that if at the same time a station want to use only dcf and an ap wants to use pcf the ap has priority due to the priority of pcf or dcf stations that only use dcf may not gain access to the medium to prevent this a repetition interval has been designed to cover both contention pre and contention based traffic remember that contention pre is pcf and contention based or dcf the repetition interval which is repeated continuously start with a special control prime called a beacon prime when the station here the beacon prime they start their nav for the duration of the contention pre period of the repetition interval figure shows the example of a repetition interval as figure shown during the repetition interval the pc or point controller can send a poll prime receive data send an acknowledgement receive an acknowledgement or do any combination of these at the end of the contention pre period the pc sends a contention pre and prime to allow the contention based stations to use the me i think this is enough for today in the next lecture we will discuss about the wireless personal area network before ending the lecture it is requested that if you have not yet subscribed the channel please subscribe it and press the bell icon so that every video reach to you first